Yeah! It goes up on Hobie! I think I'm going to do this for the rest of the broadcast. Please don't, because I'm I, watching you. I please, please don't. Like, I just need to come and um, trim your eyebrows. Nope, just, not allowed. Just kind of like shuffle them up a bit. and just I'm give trying them to brush them up so they look like Gandalf's eyebrows. Yeah, I'm like, you're pretty damn close. I just, you know, just a few scissors, just to, like like some some soap. Just get those up really high. You're like I have to do some more Radagast than uh, G- than Gandalf. You're like, but there's no he... bird living in them. <laughs> yet like anyway. Sea shabbat of eyebrows. <laughs> Don't ever say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I would show you my face, but my camera's not working for some reason. <laughs> Well, let me start the podcast here. And in three, two, one. Oh, welcome to the history of bad ideas. I'm Jeff. I'm Jeff. I'm Jim. And with us this week, intern Hackney, Hackney might be here. I'm not sure where he's at yet. But with us this week is not even a guest anymore. She's a member of the show. Jeannie of Hobie is here. Welcome, Jeannie. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I um, in my title, it's Genie of Hobie, so I'm not a guest. No, you're not. You're oh, not a reigning queen. Kneel you know before Genie. <laughs> you know what? I'll go with that. You're the queen of Hobie. I there like that. <laughs> I like that. That might Did be the title. Give yourself for the a episode. nickname. <laughs> <laughs> I suggested it, and he agreed. <laughs> <laughs> Je- hey Jim, I want to be called the hammer. You know why I can't? You can't give yourself a nickname. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> and it's a dumb nickname. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, oh, anyway. Your favorite nickname dumb. You know what? Queen of Hobie, you're out. No more okay. Queen of Hobie. All right. I'll be the princess. Damn it. One ahead of me again. Damn it. <laughs> Curses. Oh, my goodness. We got lots of exciting stuff. Just to give you some teases here this week, uh, we got the McRib is back. We're talking Christmas ep- uh, movies. We're talking uh, how to uh, successfully secede from a nation. And um, we also are going on. Uh... Back until December. What's that? McRib's not back until December. Neither is Christmas, we're but we're talking, talking Christmas movies, so... <laughs> yeah, we're, t- we're, we're, we're teasing, okay, Jim? I was trying to do something new, to give people a tease. And we got a great top five. I mean, what is the top five? So, I get it. Anyways, uh, let's see here. How's everyone doing? Meh. I've had a shit week. And it's, it's only, Tuesday. It's only Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The only great thing is that I'm doing training this week. So I'm doing uh, DBT training so that I can help people who have borderline personality disorder and want to kill themselves. So that's fun. Um, (laughs) And I get to stay in my bed and sleep in because I don't have to be in training until 830 and I can do it at my house. Oh, bastard. So, yeah. Yeah. What are you complaining about? You get to stay in your house too, Jason. Well, that was before COVID too, though, Jim. Let's be real. I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, Jason, you always look for reasons not to go to your relatives for the holidays. I am not now. The world drops one in your lap. Oh, I'm not complaining about not going to relatives this year. Trust me, this is going to be the best damn Thanksgiving I've ever had, um, <laughs> and Christmas. Um. So, Jeannie, let me ask you this. So, do you do suicides go up at the holidays, or is that just an old wives' tale? Because I've heard that summer is actually the worst. No, suicides go up during the holidays. Do they? Okay. Yeah. Well, it's, you're, you get more of a push at, like, after Christmas and before Thanksgiving. Okay. Like, okay. But, I mean, honestly, it's just about having connection and making sure that you're able to communicate boundaries and that you can actually recognize healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. Most people can't, so. 
So and it's you're... winter time, and winter time sucks. So you might as well just kill yourself. Is that the theory? conversation, Jeff? Can we that... can we can we have this later? <laughs> <laughs> I'm but not on the clock, is, sir. <laughs> winter is starting, and I hate winter. Why? Snow is beautiful. No, there it is. isn't. There is it's nothing so good about snow. It's so amazing to go outside when there's a nice, slick, white snowflakes, and it's oh, so but, cool well, and bitter, and you get the little tinglies on your nose, and it's so see, much fun. Everything you just said is the opposite of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love snow. I love, absolutely love snow. Snow might be good if a it didn't have to be cold for snow to exist. I like and that. I hate the cold. <laughs> and b if it didn't like screw up traffic. Well, I will admit that people are dumb and they don't like. We had that really bad windstorm, and I'm I work in Bowling Green, so I'm driving down 75 to get to Bowling Green, and it is 70 miles an hour, which means you go 75 miles an hour to. And they are doing 60 because it's fucking windy. <laughs> were they in rickshaws? Maybe that was it. They were afraid they were going to flip over. Uh, there, were, there are three lanes of people doing 60. I could not get around them. See, and that's was, the problem is it, when it was, you got three lanes and they're doing the same speed. Yeah. And it's not like it's a like a, a big truck because, you know, the wind, I could get a big truck being a little leery and going a little slower. No, this is like a Corolla, a minivan, an SUV. Like, mm, no. So Jeannie ran them off the road. No, oh. I, I practice it breathing and being mindful of my anger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and not to joke about, but if you are hurting at this time of the year there's pl plenty of resources to reach out to so don't be afraid to do that either so just to go back to what Jeannie was saying not to be all serious there yeah, uh, and just because you're having suicidal thoughts does not mean you're going to be thrown into a hospital like actually reach out and talk to somebody yes uh especially with uh the past year it's not everybody has made good connections and that so don't be ashamed don't be afraid so, uh, let's see here. Well, that, I'm glad we got super serious right off the bat. Thanks, Jeannie. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. I'm a load of laughs, guys. Laughs and fun right here. <laughs> uh, on a side note, what Jeff was saying, yes, this is the growing be the greatest holiday season ever because I have no family get-togethers. It's awesome. Um, the only thing I'm, I'm going to be sad about is that the floppies won't be in person this year. Very upset by that. Uh, well, of course, we, we can make that happen. Yeah, we uh -huh. could totally do it in person. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if well, you're in, legitimately sad about it, we can actually make it happen, Jason. I am a little sad about. It. I do miss you guys every Tuesday. Uh, it's not fun uh, being in here by myself in the Bob Studios. I tell my wife pretty much every other week that this sucks. At least you uh, got to sit with you. Put your pants on when you're sitting in my seat, please. Oh no. At least you have a cool dragon to look at. Mm -hmm. I do. I haven't turned him on though until uh, since you've been gone, Jeff. He misses you. He has a the dragon coming through the vent that you bought for the studios is awesome, but I have not turned him on. Um, so I've kind of kept it a little bit low key in here. Uh, we added some. Uh, we're going to add some new pictures this week. Uh, this week, I think. Um, we got that Kiss album or that Kiss uh, comic book that Doctor. You still ben have yet to hang that. I'll be honest, was I was kind of wait waiting for you. I was kind of waiting for you guys to help me decide where to go with stuff, but you know, uh, Any November place you see an empty spot, fill it. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess it, Jeff's chair just has it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's on the wall. Oh, my. <laughs> um, I was kind of surprised because uh, it's past November 4th and COVID's still here, so I was kind of waiting for that to be gone. Uh, I was told it was going to be gone. But it's yeah, not. by a bunch of morons. Well, yeah, sp it was supposed to be gone. Instead, they're telling us we're going to be shutting down. Shut yeah. it down. I uh, can imagine I can my joy on that as I am a uh, mental health worker. So it doesn't matter. I still go to work. I get off work an hour earlier every day now. Oh, for, for the next three weeks. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yes, uh, the state of Ohio today, uh, Governor DeWine uh, said that he is installing a curfew curfew from 10 p.m. till 5 a.m. Uh, we're now in Footloose. There's no dancing at weddings. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't funerals. Know how people are having weddings, anyways? You only can have 25 people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that's that's a fancy wedding. You, I mean, you must really love ballroom dancing to have dancing at your 25 person <laughs> wedding. <laughs> well, A, they're breaking those 25 person limit rules all the time. Uh, I, I think um, there was a uh, family, uh, well, not my family, but a family's wedding uh, that I know of that had 100 uh, people in October. I think it was legal, wasn't it? Because they were up to 300 they could have. Now they cut back. Now they cut back. Um, hey, yeah. the intern's here. Hey! We can actually Thanks. start now. Thanks We've for been calling. waiting. <laughs> Thanks for calling. Did I you not call him? I called him three times. I called him three times. I got zero notifications that you were calling me. Yeah, I, I'm dead serious, Brian, because I even said, well, I guess intern will uh, jump on, possibly. But yeah, I called three times. I was just sitting here waiting for you. <laughs> really? then you go on to Sky, Sky Man, he's like, a Ooh. dick. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these assholes. <laughs> Damn it, he found us, guys. <laughs> I have become the queen of Hobie and then was demoted to princess, so it's all my fault. Yes. Uh, we talked about uh, reaching out if you're not feeling the best mentally this week, Brian. We talked about that. Uh, yeah, you missed suicide talk, Brian, so consider yourself yeah, lucky. Yeah. That... I thought we were moving on, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Just giving him a wrap-up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome to the most depressing episode ever. <laughs> Thanks for showing up Thanksgiving, the day week before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, and I'm moving on to happy thoughts, Brian, that yeah. I'm not going to see any family, I'm not going to any family get togethers during the holiday. So I'm ecstatic. Uh, I've been waiting to avoid those for years. Uh, so I feel really awesome about this. So um, my wife told me the other day that it's 2020. We're uh, told the kids. It's 2020, kids. Thanksgiving. You can stay in pajamas all day. There are no rules anymore. Let's just do it. We're eating Thanksgiving. You mean they haven't been doing that all year. Well, <laughs> she tries to get them. She tries to get them dressed for virtual school at least. <laughs> so that's about, that's about you, it. You just have to get virtually dressed. <laughs> There's just nothing but nudity at Jason's house. We're virtually <laughs> dressed. It's like the emperor's new clothing. We don't need clothing. <laughs> Oh. You have a fruit salad on your favorite chair. I gotcha. <laughs> uh, Jeff, it's like strip poker. What's the first thing you lose? My pants. There you go. <laughs> I am more likely to take off my underwear over my bra. I don't, that's the weirdest thing in the world, but I'd rather have a bra on than underwear. Well, it's support. Wait a minute, you're yeah. just trying to take your underwear off through over your bra? <laughs> They're not, oh, not physically over <laughs> oh. first. Like, which one are you? Very stretchy. <laughs> You're down to the last two items of clothing. You have your underwear and you have your bra. Because I'm a woman, I've got both. Uh, or you, I mean, you could wear them too. But I'm gonna make fun of you if you're wearing a bra, Jason. And 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 you lose, and you have to decide which comes off first. Mm -hmm. I will always take my underwear off before you take my bra off. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? If you're not feeling great about yourself, become a stripper. People will pay money to see you. It doesn't matter what you look like. There you go. I don't uh, know if it's really like a, a ringing endorsement. <laughs> You'll find someone who will pay you to look at you naked. <laughs> well, what? Uh, was it Steven Spielberg's daughter talked about how empowering it is? Yeah, we'll get to that eventually. Uh, not this week, but yes, yeah, yeah. Gilbert's uh, daughter is a stripper. So, like, or no, hey. porn star, porn star too. She does both. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mostly, it's a ca it's camera, it's uh, only fans and cam soda mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, Jim. Uh, so if you're off at ten o'clock this week or in the next couple weeks because of uh, he has to be uh, home by ten o'clock. He he has to be off at nine. 
No, no, I'm allowed to travel to and from work. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, and to the cro- uh, and to the grocery store and the pharmacy. So B- just basically to- anywhere but a bar. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay too, apparently. You Where know have I been traveling these days? Uh, yep, everywhere but a bar. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what, Jim? Why don't we just gather at Kroger's at ten o'clock because the grocery stores are still open. So we'll just hang out there. How about that? Open up some beer. We'll just stand and go around the grocery store and do it every night. Go chat at Myers. <laughs> We're grocery shopping. <laughs> We're not doing laps around the store at all. D- don't worry about all my box 25 of Twenty-five of us are grocery shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have microphones in the shopping cart and talk? Oh my god. <laughs> We can totally do that for uh, for the Floppy Awards. Yes. <laughs> Walk around the grocery store while recording. With big floppy dicks. It'll be great. No one will think anything's on. Well, let's hit one of the big mega Kroger's that actually has a bar in it. Oh, that's a good call. That is a good call. I know Scab Jack won't show up unless there's alcohol. That's like, true. Blur fills. We're just here tasting the beer. Here's my quarters. <laughs> uh, I like this idea. I like this idea a lot. Let's mm-hmm. run with it. Um, and then we could have like a man on the street. Intern can uh, interview people what they're buying for the holidays. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Is that canned turkey? Is that canned ham? <laughs> Brian, what do we got on the street? What's the word on the street? What's the holiday meals this year? I'm in uh, my house. I'm talking to This guy to no doesn't one. believe that COVID's real. Uh, <laughs> this guy's not wearing a mask. Uh, I'm being arrested for beating the shit out of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy coughed on me. He's now... <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like this could work. Hobie, uh, Hobie, at, uh, Hobie at the grocery store. Let's do it. At, sure. Everything but him being arrested. Like, let's not let's not do that. We'll keep him in our little magic bubble of floppy dicks and microphones. <laughs> floppy dicks. <laughs> and you won't know which is which. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <sighs> so that's how we're all doing this week. <laughs> I told you, I'm having a terrible week, and it's Tuesday. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Uh, well, Jeff? if it makes you feel any better, I'm going on vacation starting Friday. Oh, where are you going? Are you going somewhere? Uh, Gatlinburg. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, a nice chalet away from everything. Yeah. Bottle of bourbon in a hot tub. I'm jealous. Doctor Dana yeah, going? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. What? He's gonna okay. leave his wife? <laughs> <laughs> what? What did you, you say, say, Jim? I said thanks for the invite. <laughs> so Brian, you won't be on the show next week. I will not. Okay, I don't blame. Call you. it from Gatlinburg. I mean, I I could, <laughs> I, I could pop in. <laughs> oh, he can sit in front nope. of his computer I, and wait for a phone call, and it won't come. So I I got a nope from the kitchen. So <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> come on, Doctor Dana. Damn you. <laughs> So is going on vacation a better excuse for missing than watching Oak Island? I don't know what you're talking about. The cast of Hobie's right here. Uh, (laughs) I'm not sure which of uh, of Blake's 16 excuses was the correct one, but I think we can go with Oak Island. Ooh, a button! (laughs) Hey guys, I really don't like driving 40 minutes to go to the do a podcast. Okay, well we're all virtual now. I don't like turning on my computer now. <laughs> He's stressing out. Leave him alone. I have suicide survivor group next week, but if I get home in time, I might call in. There you go. Like with the group? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, when I get, get, get home, group ends no. at 730. I have to drive oh, home. Okay, okay. Without get, the group. Go get yeah. the group to call in, and and we'll talk them uh, yeah, into not... More depressing. Let's talk about how I lost my brother. I, he overdosed on aspirin. <laughs> well, thanks, Jeannie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Brian, can I go Gatlinburg with you next week? <laughs> Buying a house in Tennessee right now is nope. almost impossible. <laughs> Dr. Dana said no. So I, I booked this 
in August, uh, the beginning of August, and it was like one of five left on Airbnb that were available. Yeah. Back in August. Yeah. So I pretty much since August, uh, maybe September, uh, September, uh, all of September, I looked for uh, Gatlinburg rentals uh, for Christmas uh, and Thanksgiving. And I knew it was a long shot. Don't get me yeah. wrong. And, and my wife was like back and forth on it. Like, you know, I don't know who knows how COVID's going to be then. Maybe we'll be OK. And then once it started getting worse, she's like, just find some place. And I did. I was like. At Christmas, I think it's like two thousand dollars for four nights. I can't, I can't justify two thousand dollars for Gatlinburg right now uh, with five kids, yeah. Christmas, and that. sure, uh, yeah, like or three kids. We, we checked through like all of the cabin places, like the places that own a bunch, mm-hmm. yeah. And for what we needed, like because we're taking the dogs, the mm-hmm. like for we're staying Friday to Wednesday. Uh, for five nights, like the cheapest I found through any of those sites was like twenty one hundred. Yeah, hmm. yeah. And just off, I was just like, oh, I'll just check Airbnb, and I got like super lucky, like that this one was even available. Like it, it. I mean, just kind of looked into it, and it was like less than a thousand bucks. So that's nice. I mean. <laughs> And that yeah. was other issues too with Christmas. We were looking because we had ta- we were going to take our dog, obviously, and that's yeah. And you know, and then my wife's like, "If I'm spending two thousand dollars, I'm not going to Gatlinburg. <laughs> Give me right. some place for two thousand dollars." I was like, "I got it. I understand." <laughs> yeah, nothing within like five hours of here is available. <laughs> like we looked at uh, Rep- or we looked at the Gorge, we looked at Hocking Hills, like nothing. So. Yeah, um, you know, because Jeff, Jeff and Jim, you know how positive I am as a person. Uh, I'm really positive. And right. uh, my wife's like, I'm not doing well with Christmas, with the holidays, that we're not seeing a lot of people, not being able to do a lot of our traditional stuff. So you need to be, like, super positive this year for the holidays. And I have been. Like, we are going to find fun stuff to do. Let's go. I got this. I got this. So I've done a 180 this year. I'm like, let's do this. No, ho- no, no, no get togethers. I'm fine with that. I'll find tons of stuff to do at night. So, what are you yeah. doing Holiday for Black cookies. Friday, Jason? Oh, we already did our shopping. Um, yeah, but what are you doing for Black Friday? Uh, I'm still shopping. Uh, most most deals are still online uh, every week and throughout November. Target just released their Black Friday deal, which goes on sale actually the week of Thanksgiving. Um, hardly anyone's really doing. Black Friday, like even online, they're not doing Black Friday online shopping. It's uh, they just have like four weeks of sales. So good. Uh, what's that? I said good. Oh, yeah. I agree. Hopefully, they have a good year doing it this way. That they decide it works better than mm. one crappy weekend. Uh... Personally, I miss the days of getting up on Friday after Thanksgiving, going shopping at four in the morning or five. <laughs> I don't know why you're you... insane. I, I you enjoy work, it. You worked retail. I, I, worked retail. I was just going to say, and you worked in retail yes. and you know how miserable that is. I always try to go with pre positive. I never get upset with they don't have anything. I never yell at people. Well, no, I wouldn't get mad. I'd get mad at the other customers. That's why it yeah. sucks. Yeah. You have to be out with other assholes. Uh, I, you're, forcing, I, you're forcing people to go to work at fucking 4 a.m. I'm not making them. But you're the reason they're fucking there. I'm not if the you, only reason. If more people didn't go at four in the morning, it wouldn't be open. Yeah, no, no, no. no. I'm no, not the only it's, reason. It's, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I don't take responsibility. It's not my fault. <laughs> Next, you're going to be blaming Trump for COVID. Simmer down, people. Simmer it's not down. one man's fault. Simmer down. Wait, what? <laughs> it, it is his fault. <laughs> Yeah, his lack of response really, and like, whew. okay, but like for Christmas, I buy two Christmas presents. That's it. Mm-hmm. So for my yourself? no, no, oh. I buy Logan a present. I buy Leah a present. I'm done. Okay. Nobody else gets presents for me. Uh, we and did, I we got to convince the... them not to do presents. Yeah, I mean, I got I got my wife presents. I'm done with her. Um, <laughs> I'm done with her. Done with her. <laughs> done buying presents for her. That's and awesome. then we, 
like I said, we like I said on the show a couple weeks ago, you know, we got a bottle of wine and got all the kids' presents. So uh, you got your kids' bottle of wine? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's called it's a weird grape year, juice. man. It's a weird year. Can I get some of that? Uh, <laughs> 2020 Christmas ornament coming because I felt like I needed it. Okay. Okay. All right. Do you have a fake tree or a real tree? I don't have a tree right now because I went you. through a divorce. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we did go by, we went and cut down the Christmas tree every year. Um, and yeah, I don't have anything to keep a tree alive in my house, and I don't have a fake tree, and I don't want to spend three hundred dollars on one. So, we we have no tree. So go I'll buy a tree the day after Christmas <laughs> for next year. But I don't okay. think about it. I a my... little hint: the tree is already dead once you remove it from its roots, <laughs> so you can't yeah. really keep it alive. Yeah, but it's because it. the fire hazard. The drier it gets. And I have nothing to keep water on it. I, I've i never been through a divorce, but why did you guys fight over who kept the live tree from last year? <laughs> no, it's always fun to set that on fire. Oh, but all okay. the stuff, like the, 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 the thing you put it in, so it you have water and like mm-hmm. all that stuff. He got all the Christmas ornaments and everything. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I got you. I am uh, not a fan of Christmas because I worked retail. Christmas <laughs> sucks. Yes, it does suck. <laughs> Unless you're in a beautiful town in Idaho where Hanno lives, where Christmas is magical. Uh, <laughs> no, no, Christmas is the worst <laughs> holiday of the year. I love. Speaking from experience, Jim. <laughs> yeah. I love Christmas. Like, I love the holidays uh-huh. because. Sorry. I feel like, except for Jim, everybody's nicer. Nope. Um, no. <laughs> what the? Wrong. How what are you? Are you, you work in retail. Me. Everyone is meaner during the yeah. holidays. Everyone. Oh, no, no, no. What do you mean everybody's nicer? I used to be a nice person around Christmas. Then people ruined it. They're <laughs> like, I'm going to fuck you in the ass without lube and you're going to like it. That is Christmas. <laughs> and then Christmas you feel like you have to rush just to be with family because you're not off work. At mm-hmm. all these times when the family's getting together, and you feel I rush, uh, you know, to to have a, a some semblance of a of a uh, holiday. holiday, but nope, everybody else is always all, oh yeah, everything's great. But no, things suck. Not this year. And you hate being around happy people when things suck because it makes things suck worse. Yeah. When are you yeah. going to? When are you going to start dating, Jeannie? I don't want to talk to you about my love life. <laughs> You're going to have to rush down to Louisville to spend uh, Christmas with the uh, fiance's family. And then Christmas happens. And then you no longer have a fiance because she's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a true story? <laughs> yeah, true story. <laughs> I, the most yeah, expensive Christmas, like Christmas present I ever most got. magical time of the year. <laughs> yeah, the most expensive <laughs> Christmas present I ever got was an engagement ring back. <laughs> Cheaper than a divorce. <laughs> that is true. Yes, it is. <laughs> you didn't pay for the wedding. You didn't pay for the lawyer. You didn't lose half your shit. <laughs> <laughs> The worst is when your friends call you up and make fun of you that week. Jesus, what assholes. On New Year's when you're stuck at working on New Year's Eve. <laughs> I don't know who did that. True oh, stories, guys. That, true stories. That, that asshole Blake. God. <laughs> Blake was too worried about other things to care about giving him a hard time. <laughs> and we didn't really hang out with Blake at that time either. So. <laughs> I did apologize. It may not have been my finest moment or joke. <laughs> Takes a lot for me to apologize about a joke. That 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 was that was I know. Well wrong. Let's call him again. <laughs> I, I think it was the third or fourth call that really put him over, Jason. I'll be honest. I think it was the alcohol talking that night. And then the next day when I sobered up and I was like, oh God, I called Jim. That was not cool. <laughs> <sighs> All right. 
Right. Sorry, Jim. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> so let's talk about how much more Christmas is amazing. <laughs> Just saying. Because well, you really, a- you know, really, really convinced me that Christmas is amazing. What's the worst Christmas film? Twitter poll of the week. <laughs> you got my answer. <sighs> you can find us at Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter. Uh, what's the worst Christmas film? We have The Polar Express. Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas. Fuck you, Kirk. <laughs> Jingle All the Way. And a Medea Christmas. <sighs> Hallelujah. Uh, in last place. 13% jingle all the way with our That movie Kinnick. is an Academy Award winner if you compare it to the rest of these films. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the one with Sinbad? Was he Moving in that? on. <laughs> I, was it Sinbad? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I yeah. tried not to watch that movie, so I don't remember who was in it. I'll look it up. Speak of, thank you, intern. Uh, speaking of Sinbad, he's recovering from a stroke. Did you see oh, that? Oh, yeah. Well, that's not yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, Lots of uh, prayers just, just bad. encouraging us on this like this train of like sadness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was then bad. Bill Hartman, Reed Wilson. Yes, then bad. Bill Hartman, I forgot about that. Did you uh, say Bill Hartman? Bill. <laughs> Uh, in third place. Talk about Phil Hartman. That's some more happy, uh, joyous uh, stories. <laughs> oh my gosh! He's trying to keep it going. Well, who's in third place? Third place. <laughs> uh, a Medea Christmas with twenty six percent of the vote. So there you go. And winning thirty three percent to twenty eight percent. Jeff's favorite Christmas film, The Polar uh. Express. Beats Kirk Cameron saving Christmas. Creepy zombie children. Ugh. I hey, disagree with those statements. I told you what the worst Christmas movie is. Is it one of them on this list? No. Oh, well. There's, there's always, the right answer is always what's not on the list. I, gave, I wrote down what the worst. I said, It's a Wonderful Life is a fucking horrible Christmas movie. I don't disagree. I think it's a horribly overrated film. Well, first of all, the only reason that it's popular is because it was so bad. They didn't give them any problems about running it on television. Correct. It it was so bad that they didn't bother to uh, renew their their license for it. So it was in the public domain. Yeah. It's a horrible movie. Is it still in the public domain? Yeah. For some reason, I think somebody was able to acquire... The reacquire right. the rights, but okay. I don't know. It's goofy. I didn't know you could ever reacquire them after it went to the public domain, but apparently you can. So mm-hmm. I don't like know Disney. those rules. Probably Disney. Probably. Uh, Polar Express, we got a little hate online for this. Uh, people really like the Polar Express. I well, apparently 33% felt it was shit. So. Yeah. <laughs> See, the problem is people love and hate this movie. It's polarizing. Ah! (laughs) but yeah you either love or hate this movie so i don't think the story is horrible but the animation bothers me so much Mm -hmm. that i cannot enjoy the movie a 28 page picture book is fine a movie where they put in a stupid song about drinking hot chocolate with creepy zombie kids and turning a steven tyler into an elf no Hey, uh, Jeff, from this, from point, this on, point on, this film is going to be good. Nope, <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> Jeff and I had the pleasure of watching this film when he worked at the theaters. And every time something bad happened, so every minute, I, I kept looking at Jeff and go, okay, Jeff, from this point on, we will grade this film. Yeah. From this it's going to be on, better from this point are. on. And then they got to Santa's workshop, and then we're like, okay, from this point on, it's five minutes left. It can't be that bad. Is that fucking Steven Tyler as an elf? <laughs> Fuck. We're done. We're out. <laughs> Screw this movie. It got better after that, though. The credits rolled. I <laughs> do believe, Jason, that movie sucked because of you. From this point on, you cursed it. I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx it. All right. From this point on, the podcast is going to be better. <laughs> <laughs> like, overall, or just this episode? Yes. <laughs> I 
I want to say overall, but I don't believe it. So we'll just shoot for this episode and see how we do. I like it. Sounds good. good. Sounds good. (sighs) Anyways, moving on. Uh, Brian, how you doing, intern? I'm good, man. Well, good. (laughs) <laughs> let's, uh, let's see. Do you want to do the uh, listener feedback this week? I can do the listener feedback. Why don't you? All right. Listener feedback sponsored by Zoloft. Because everybody <laughs> needs it, apparently, after listening <laughs> to this episode. To the first 20 minutes of this. <laughs> uh, first up, we've got uh, that one guy. No, we're uh, on paint. Eight pains. Uh, Seven. Dad. Mm. <laughs> uh, Doug. Doug says the McRib is coming back nationwide at McDonald's. How many will each of you have? Zero. I've Eight never. Eat one. Zero. Never eaten one ever. Never. I've never had a McRib ever. What? Uh. I've never had a McRib ever. Jeannie, if you ever t- wanted to taste really good shoe leather, you should really try the McRib. It is awesome. It's I'm, better than I, shoe leather. <laughs> I'm going to say that if I want to eat processed meat to the point that I have to put it into a Play-Doh press play thing to make it look like a rib thing, <laughs> I'll just eat Play-Doh. <laughs> Tastes better than Play-Doh. I'll be mm-hmm. honest. I've had them both. It tastes better. <laughs> Yeah, I've never had one. I have no desire. Jim, do you not like the McRib? I just, it's not that I don't like it, but I just don't care about it. I mean, it's not something that I go out of my way to eat. Yeah. I'm well, indifferent. And, and we've talked about this before. I don't think any of us are really big McDonald's fans on the show anyways, right? <laughs> no. I really only uh, eat one fast food. Occasionally, I got like a quarter pounder or double quarter pounder just sounds really delicious, like okay. hangover food. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, no. I like or, the... Um... Or two in the morning McDoubles. I... <laughs> Those are clutch. Yeah. Well, now it's going to be 10 at night uh, McDoubles, Jim. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nine, well, the drive eight the, at night. The drive thru can stay open. You can oh, still be at two in the morning. True. You just have to get it early. Let it oh, sit and marinate. All those other places are like at two o'clock. It's like uh, it's McDonald's or like White Castle, and they're like ah. Uh. But now at ten, I have other options. <laughs> like I can go hang out at my Kroger store. <laughs> you get quarters. We got some beers. Let's go. <laughs> Ma'am, that is your third box of wine. You can't just keep opening them. You can't. Okay, first. I only okay. remember I put the first two. Thank you. <laughs> What'd you say, Jeannie? I said, I wouldn't be drinking boxes of wine. Well, I was trying to do it for a comedic effect. You know what, Jeannie? You're no longer the princess of uh, are Hobie. You, are you too snooty to get your wine from a box? No, I would be drinking beer. Let's be honest. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, like, I thought if it was I, the If I'm at a grocery store and I've got an option of a delicious IPA or a box of wine that's red, I'm drinking the IPA. I'm drinking the wine. No, I'm drinking the wine. <laughs> Hey, Depends. Jim, can Is I get some of that? Farm? <laughs> Getting some I'll strawberry skip both and I'll get the low-proof low Kentucky Tavern bourbon. No, Brian, you get caliper. You yes. get non-alcoholic Guinness beer caliper. Yes. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> um, if I have, if I even do, I'll have maybe one. McRib? Yeah, not not. I'm not that big of a fan. Uh, really. I mean, I know. I feel like I I always go like, oh, it's kind of like the Shamrock Shake. Oh yeah, I'm really excited. And then you have one, you're like, I'm good for nine months. I'm good. I'll make my own Shamrock Shake. I don't need to go buy one. Well, you know what, Jeannie, we're well, not see, all high and mighty like you. Okay. I <laughs> admittedly do go multiple times in February and March for that reason. The mm-hmm. Shamrock Shake. Yes. I okay. will say, Jeannie, mm-hmm. not all of us are good enough at making shakes, so we have to go to McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Or, well, I won't go to McDonald's for a shake, to be honest. 
Uh, you go to uh, Arby's with that Jamocha shake. Oh. That's better than anything McDonald's has. <laughs> Are you being funny, Jim? Because I love the Jamocha shake. No, from no. I'm okay. being serious. Okay. I mean, I'm going to like UDF or Graders for a good shake. Yeah, I'm just make my own. Okay, moving on. <laughs> make your own. You probably off. make your own dinner too, don't you? I did. Today we had pumpkin waffles and bacon. Mm. That sounds good. Next time you can bring some over to me. Okay, it's a three-hour drive to you. <laughs> Here's a you can leave it on the front porch. That's fine. <laughs> serious question: crispy bacon or floppy bacon? So it's crispy, but not. Oh. It still has a little bit of chew to it because we do it in the oven. My daughter likes hers to the point where it's garbage. She wants it burnt and oh. blackened. So like we have thick cut bacon because it's the only like thick juicy bacon. It's just amazing. So you, when you hold it up, it holds up. But when you bite into it, there's still just a little bit of give. So it's perfect. Okay. Uh, my ba- my bacon's got a droop. Yeah, yeah. You should yeah. be able to wrap it around something for the. Yeah, that, that's uncooked meat, by the way. That's, I'm just saying. Yeah, that's before you cook it. Yeah. And wrap it around <laughs> another uh, another animal product or yeah. you wrap vegetable, up the, the chicken, the bacon, the meatloaf. If, if when you bend it, it snaps. It's it's already ruined. Mm-hmm. It's that delicious. happens more than you think, Jeff. That's what she said. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> What's your name, Brian? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. The one guy who does the one stuff. All right. Well, the um, other guy isn't here. <laughs> from uh, Fish. Oh. Uh, he would like to know how did Washington quarterback Kyle Allen only escape with a dislocation? Question mark. I didn't realize he did. That was a gruesome injury. He was lucky, but at least the Washington football team has the proper starting quarterback in right now. The Alex best guy on the roster. Alex, Alex Smith. Smith. Yeah. Well, I hope he does well this week against the Bengals since I'm starting him in fantasy. Since Brian go- beat me this week. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm going to go with he sold his soul. Oh. <laughs> sold his soul. Good answer. He so was the survey says. Before. He wor- He was injured worse. He sold his soul and le- left with the, just a dislocation. So I think what? he sold his soul earlier, so they benched uh, Haskins so he could play. Ugh. This <laughs> is the repercussion for selling his soul? Gotcha. <laughs> and the good news is when he sold his soul, Jeff, Aunt May survived still. So that was great. But, but they're getting rid of that. Yeah, I've read about that. Spider-Man's getting rid of one more day. It's still shit. <laughs> Oh. But, to write it out. but in the okay. last in the last issue, they snapped Peter Parker's neck. The demon did. Well, if you snap oh. it so or you bend now. it so far, Jason, it snaps. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's what happens with me. Because his neck is not made <laughs> of you, good. You can bacon. apply this across several different things. <laughs> He's powerless without his head. <laughs> Most of us are. Yes. <laughs> the only funny line from what was that scary movie? Scary four? Three. 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 That was yeah. three. Okay. <laughs> Powerless without their heads. <laughs> just like it's okay. All he wanted was the machete. His machete. You just want Jason machete X. back. <sighs> okay. All right. Back uh let's see here. We got back to back questions from Steve at E I L F movies. Oh, okay. Everything I learned from movies. From movies. Uh, the first question is: When is New Mutants two coming out, and, and will we survive long enough to see it? Today. No. It already Today. came out. Moving. It on. is. It is coming out on video and DVD. Today or DVD and Blu-ray today. The second one, not no, New the, Mutants. The question two. was: Oh, New Mutants me. two. New Mutants. Oh, yeah. oh, it's never coming out. <laughs> so, in theory, we will survive long enough to not to see it. S- see it. Good. <laughs> if it never comes out. Yeah. Maybe. Never say never ever again. 
I mean, maybe I'll make new mutants too with the sketch pad someday. No, no, no. You got to do it with puppets, sock puppets. Oh. That will be the best thing ever. Okay. <laughs> who's the, ah, I'm who's so the Russian sorry. bear? <laughs> All right. What? I got I'm there. the bear. I'm the the bear. Russian bear, bear. Olaf Volkarov? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Jason, Your that was the Russian really guardian that had the bear. Oh, not my, new bad. my bad. <laughs> my bad. My bad. There was the oh, demon bear in the new mutant movie, but that wasn't Russian. I'm a demon bear. <laughs> so are Russians demons? Because the accent was the same. <laughs> <laughs> They're also Michael <laughs> Cage. <laughs> And Hunter All right. Uh, so Steve's second question is, what is your favorite Star Trek moment, and why is it when Spock dies? That's not my favorite moment, though. Which time? Which yeah. time? So the question Spock. reads, what is your favorite Star Trek moment, and why is it when Spock dies? And I'm going. I'm putting this up to Steve for next time. You can send which time when Spock dies. Yeah, right. Several times. I will issue a rebuttal in yeah. which Star time? Trek Two. <clears throat> the what was the uh, the Wrath of Khan or Wrath in Khan. uh what was it Star Trek? The new one, Captain into, Kirk dies, doesn't he? No, one in the darkness. Dark. Yeah. But Spock, the old Spock, oh, uh, yeah. played by Leonard Nimoy, does die in the He's new in Star Wars or something, right? Mm-hmm. He's in a yeah. cave, and the Wampa monster gets him, right? And, like, slices no, him before the Skywalker it. gets there? No, stop he doesn't it. die then. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, that's right. Luke Skywalker he saved him by cutting off the arm. That's I'm going right. to tell yeah. you, my favorite moment, the thing that I always think about when I think of Star Trek, is Scotty picking up the mouse and going, Computer! Computer. That's Hello? my favorite moment. <laughs> I can agree with that because, mm-hmm. like, your uh, uh, like uh, Alexa crap, you can rename yes. it like a couple things. I and computer is one of them. So I I renamed uh, my my Echo computer so I can always say computer. Yeah, and that, I mean, I think about it all the time. I talk to my kids about it. They've never seen it, and they're like, "Mom, you're just crazy." I'm like. <laughs> Computer, computer. <laughs> it's my favorite moment. So it's not Spock at all. I think I remember. I think my favorite moment is Data becoming a Borg in one of the movies because that's You're the only one I think I saw at the theater. No. I think my favorite moment is when they Still canceled the original series because mm. it was boring as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to go with the uh, the episode that I've never seen. <laughs> okay. That's everything no, no, no. That's Star All Wars. That's mm-hmm. Star no, Wars. It's, no, it's Star Trek too. I, <laughs> I like when they got the new ship, the Orville, uh, and it's actually Ratted really, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't like a better know. Star Trek than Star Trek is. <laughs> I like. Is. I like when Kirk died. Okay. I didn't because they brought him back with Tribbles. So Tribbles with Tribbles. But it was a it was a great uh, moment going back to the original when Spock died. <laughs> okay, moving on. And, a, and apologize, apology for anybody that hasn't seen Star Trek. Spock dies. So spoilers. My bad. Oh, Apparently, don't. multiple times. <laughs> you just have to get in the TARDIS and figure out which one you want to go to. Are you speaking English? <laughs> <laughs> uh, See, that's not Doctor Who. That's another thing you've never watched. I just said, if we're going to cross-pollinate, I was going to go with a better one. Go with Doctor Who. Is Doctor Who DR period who? No. Is that who? No. Did, did you no. Want kicked in the balls? I'm, I'm going to try it down. I know where you live. I have your phone awesome. number. <laughs> that sounds like you're kidnapping my wife. <laughs> I have your wife's number. <laughs> <clears throat> Moving on. He's the better person to kidnap. <laughs> uh, I believe that this is a duplicate question that has been asked previously, but 
from uh, from Dana Gardens. What? He I think it's been wants on me. To know mm-hmm. if you had a pet monkey and it was being bad, would you spank your monkey that night, or do you prefer to spank your monkey in the morning? Do better, Dana. Do better. Come on, we've had this one. Yes. Yes. Yeah, he he's a little infatuated with spanking monkeys. Yes. Yes. It's almost as if that is not the actual question. Now, is he fascinated with spanking your monkey? Yeah, I think that he just likes saying, likes hearing you guys talk about spanking monkeys. Hmm. Okay. It's, uh, I don't know. It's kind of euphemism. I'll go with the, yeah, I am not going to do any more of the uh, employee reviews in the basement with him anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Do you choke your chicken before you eat it, or do you choke your chicken after you eat it? (laughs) So from this point on, guys. So when your knob is dirty, when do you polish it? From this point on. Brian, give me to professor number one. I never thought I would say that. We're gonna we're gonna wrap this uh, glorious <laughs> listener feedback up with uh, a question from professor number one at doctor number one. Rank these Christmas films from worst to best: Home Alone, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, A Christmas Story, and Polar Express. <sighs> Well, Polar, Polar Express, Express is the worst. worst. Yeah. yeah. Polar Express, Home Alone, A Christmas Story, National Lampoons. Yep. I agree. I agree. agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. So I say Polar Express worst, Christmas Story, Home Alone, Ooh. Christmas Vacation. Wow. I put Christmas Story best out of all those. But other than that, it's close to the same order. You know what, Brian? I think I do agree with you. I think I like Home Alone the more I've seen it with the kids and that. So you know what? Christmas Story, I think, is a little... You let your kids watch that, Maniac? Oh, my God. That's a terrible movie. Yeah. It's so violent. I know. know. I'm going to have kids just so I can not let them watch that movie. Uh, My daughter last night told me that she has figured out a way to kill everybody in this household. (laughs) I think she's she's going to become... guys. Yeah. (laughs) She's on the track. Right, so from Batman. this point on, <laughs> what? So we had I had a through. we I had an argument with uh, some people on Twitter about uh, Die Hard being a Christmas movie. It is my like, favorite Christmas movie. And and the the guy's comment was, "Oh, so you like a bunch of like killing terrorists as uh is, is Christmas?" And I'm like, "I worked in retail. Yeah, I'd I don't like Christmas John McClane." killing people than me <laughs> having to kill people <laughs> and, and he was like okay if explained that way i'll agree <laughs> <laughs> you know what i realized though i think that psycho might, might be my favorite christmas movie <laughs> psycho christmas it takes place in december <laughs> does it yeah it doesn't make it a christmas movie a apparently very, it does everyone's very says all under yeah. underrated never talked about Christmas movie that is a favorite of mine is Reindeer Games. I knew it. I was yeah. just going to say that. You well, better. Surely... Shane Black do that one too? Yeah. Because, I mean, like Iron Man 3 and uh, uh, what's it? Lethal Weapon. Uh-huh. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Great Christmas movies. Cause... Charlie Theron gives the gift of uh, that, that always gives. <laughs> Right, no, no, keep giving. Never mind. I don't even know. I'm having a stroke. The gift uh, that always gives. Do you smell? <laughs> are you pulling a Sinbad, Jason? Pulling a Sinbad. Yes, Jim. Uh, wow. Jeff, give me Ding some news dong. of the geek. Give me some news of the geek intro, Jeff. It's time for another installment of the news of the geek. It's not on the outline, but we'll talk about this. So I'm all caught up on Mandalorian. Great. I'm not. What's that? Well, I'm not even going to talk about that part, Brian, the oh. Mandalorian series. I'm talking about uh, Baby Yoda, uh, the child, eating eggs of a fictional alien species uh, that's the last of 
their species. They're trying to transport them. It's not, not the they last know. species. It's the last of that family line. Sorry, yes. sorry, sorry, sorry. So, so it's not thing. get not killing off the entire species, just that family line. I apologize. I apologize. So last of the family so it's line. Everybody, it's every idiot on online complaining about it. <laughs> so throughout the episode, Baby Yoda is hungry. He's a little guy. And he keeps going in and eating some of the eggs. I think he ate like four of the eggs, four or five. And she still had some left. She still had like eight. And people are now online bitching that they need to cancel Baby Yoda because this fictional character is eating eggs of a fictional species of a fictional family that will not, no longer exist if he's successful. Jim, are you outraged too? I'm outraged that people are outraged about this. <laughs> you guys don't get it. Baby Yoda is taking away her right to choose. Oh, dear God. Stop it. I, Stop I, it. Yeah. All right. I, I, mm. she, she was putting her eggs aside, and mm-hmm. he is now eating them. It was her right to have her eggs ready to be fertilized when she was ready, and he is taking it from her. I just think that the man that is the most ruining. ridiculous thing I've heard in my entire life. I agree, well, but yeah. that's I read. I saw that argument online, and I had to put it forward so, so everyone had to hear it. The argument is that he's taking her rights away to breed. Yep, and not that he's eating delicious eggs. Yes. Okay. So I can't. As I said, I can't wait till chickens start learn how to use Twitter and they start complaining <laughs> about eating all their eggs. Yeah, once all those eggs on Twitter start hatching, then we're going to have some real problems on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was watching... Okay, so I was two episodes behind and I, I watched with my oldest son. And we were two episodes behind and all I saw was a brief snippet of people are bitching about Baby Yoda eating the species. And I try to avoid all spoilers for Mandalorian. So when we're watching it... And we get to the end, I'm like, did he eat all of them? Like, I was expecting him to eat all of them. And when he no. didn't, I'm like, this is the dumbest thing ever. Why are we bitching about this? Why? Why? I'm going to go with we're a society that has no I, function. I, I, think if I, I think if I... Jason, I think if I see the pop of Yoda with the egg thing, I mm-hmm. will buy it for the studio. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Is there a pop with him eating an egg? A Funko no, pop. It's, it, it's a Funko Pop of him there, and the egg container is there, and he's, like, looking into it. Uh-huh. It came out four days after the episode was released. Okay. <laughs> I just, I, I don't get it. I don't. Uh, you know what else I don't get? Deadline is talking about Dennis the Menace is returned to the small screen. Why? With- Bino Studios developing a young adult adaptation of the iconic British comic book character. Oh, it's the British Dennis the Menace. Matthew Barry, one of the writers of Netflix, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, has written the pilot, and the company is in talks with U.S. Studios to partner, uh, U.S. Studio partners, to get involved with a live-action project. You do realize uh, the British Dennis the Menace is a hundred percent different than the American Dennis. The correct. Menace. Correct. Correct. Okay. But still, it's still just ridiculous because of fucking Dennis the Menace. I hate that character so much. But it's a so different character much. if it's the British one. Is it because you're Mr. Wilson? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> Mr. Wilson! The tone of the pilot script quote, this is a quote, the tone of the pilot script is understood to be much darker than the original, with Dennis believed to be a teenager around the age of 16 and uh, flitting in, flirting in and out of trouble with the police. So this is going to be your new favorite show because this is just Riverdale. There's going to be abs. There's going to be sexy, hot teenagers that aren't teenagers. Like, this, yeah, so this is your new favorite show. They're going to get a shirtless Matt Bomer to play 16-year-old Dennis the Menace. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, One store is told Deadline that the remake has a tone that is similar to British drama Skins. So there you go. Uh, in the so UK, they're getting they're, naked. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Bino is a looking. Uh, Bino Studios is looking to take advantage of his two thousand plus characters, with characters like Minnie the Minx, the Bash Street Kids, 
Roger the Dodger and Billy Wiz among the main possibilities. <laughs> Billy Wiz. <laughs> These sound like all like rejected names from uh what was that? The Bubblegum Joe or Bazooka Joe Bazooka comic Joe. Yeah. Bubblegum Joe. <laughs> they were all garbage pail kids. <laughs> well, the Dodger is originally from Oliver, so Consider they're myself? In the not Roger the Dodger though. <laughs> Consider myself one of the group. Consider <laughs> myself <laughs> that <Polished. laughs> Consider yourself at home. See, I was right. Consider mm-hmm. yourself part of the family. Or the group. Okay. Whatever. In completely unrelated news, has anybody here done some fleets? I done don't know what that is, so I'll say no. Yeah, I did one today. It's the newest thing on Twitter. Instead of an edit function, they made it so you can create a story and like pin it to the top of your uh, page. So they're, they're turning Twitter into Instagram. Yeah, or no. Or Snapchat. Or I don't know Facebook. what either of those are. I don't either. <laughs> I was like, I just watched, what is it, The Social Dilemma? And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm going off all social media. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. just going to become a hermit in a tiny house on 20 acres of land. Everyone leave me. I'm becoming Jason. Oh. <laughs> oh <God. laughs> so um, at, at dinner every night, uh, my, my kids and my wife and I, we have a top three. Mm-hmm. Uh, no matter how crappy your day is, you got to have a top three good things for the day. So um, my one of mine today was uh, I'm working from home and in the background I always have some TV show on and I've now been hooked on building off the grid. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I said one well, of my top three is, you know what? It's actually not that unfeasible. We could probably do this for yeah. about twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand. And she's like, what? No. And I was like, no, no. Cons- just as like a vacation home, like to get away. Buy some mm-hmm. land in the middle of nowhere, you know. Jason, and, give me a yeah. call. Uh-huh. I'm all for this. Okay, like, good. We'll have a compound, 20 acres Sounds of great. land. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it will not be a <laughs> Surrounded by barbed wire fences <laughs> and guns and no, no guns. vicious attack dogs. No, this only. We're going to survive. Brian, you said you're in? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, apparently... I've got, own, just, I've got my own. I've got my own plot of land. Idea? What's that, Jim? Jason, wasn't this Carolyn's idea to get land and just build a like cul-de-sac with like, but yeah. the cul-de-sac would be so big you'd have like an acre or two between each house, and then just yeah. build houses. Friends. I don't want to be any close. To, I don't want to be close to any main roads. I want to be in the woods, so I want. Well, I, don't think, I don't think she was street. going off the grid. Yeah, I, I think she still was going to you know hook up to. Sewage and plumbing. Whoa, and whoa, 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 whoa. We're not going off that. And electricity. Conversations about composting toilets being amazing. Yeah. No, no, no. We're not going off that grid. We're still on sewage, Joe. Um, <laughs> we're still having sewage. We're not going off grid at all. Yeah, not that's even close. not going off grid. Yeah. No, no. We still have. We, we have solar. You, yeah, a shit ton of money. thousand dollars to run plumbing. <laughs> I, I, I get it. I get it. It's a small price to pay. <laughs> Although, I to... I, apparently, there are some places where it's illegal to be off the grid. Because mm-hmm. oh. I think there, I saw there was one family that was trying to go off the grid, and mm-hmm. they like, you, you know, took away their children for child endangerment because they didn't have, they weren't hooked up to the electrical grid because they had their own electricity. Yep, <laughs> it's crazy, guys. Hmm. Jeannie, I'm with you though. My wife likes you. We we could do this. Let's go. I I am totally. I've tried convince friends of mine. Like let's. They're all like you're crazy. That's why I'm I don't have you. any more friends. Yeah, boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I told Leah she graduates high school. I'm leaving. I have a job set up so I can go work in Alaska six months of the year, Done. make sixty thousand dollars, and then I just have a tiny house. It'd be great. Yep. Yeah. I have no issue with that. Which six months? Summer months. Okay. Well, that's not a bad job at all, then. Yeah. No. Yeah, they're lo- they were looking for drug and alcohol uh, counselors up in Alaska during you know the summer months when people are working. <laughs> 
you know, who, you can I stay thought, around I maybe winter, you, gotta... you can stay around the winter and do all the uh, suicide uh, talks because <laughs> when there's no daylight. Yeah, I, it'll be like the I'm gonna get caught in the thirty days of night. The vampire, yeah, that'll be yeah. great. Yeah, you could be the security guard for the little place in Barrow, Alaska, when. The... <laughs> And in the other off season, you could go work on a crab fishing boat. Yeah. <laughs> Islands, let's go. <laughs> From this point on. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? You, let's you get know more... that's going to be the name of the show, right? From this point on, yeah. name of show. <laughs> I've got a list growing. Yeah. I do. Too. <laughs> I feel like when you bend the meat, it's broken. So. <laughs> I'm not bending the meat. Uh, poor the Washington Post. Poor the Post of fake Washington. news. Fake news. Uh, as the dust settles from 2020 presidential election, one disappointed Mississippi lawmaker has pro- has a proposition for the Magnolia State. Instead of it being governed by doing? President-elect Joe Biden, State Representative Price Wallace, a Republican, said on Twitter that he knows what Twitter is that Mississippi should succeed from this rest of the <laughs> United States and form its own country. That's the S-U-C-C- best part. S-U-C-C-E-E-D. He wants it to succeed. This is, <laughs> this is right along the lines of Tommy Tuberville. <laughs> he's so next he's door, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Huh? He's in Alabama. Yeah, he's next yeah. door. So maybe they'll join their own successful uh, <laughs> state. You know what? <laughs> As as an American, I want every state to succeed. So that's right. Uh, Despite the misspelling, his since-deleted tweet on Saturday afternoon, posted hours after the election was called for Biden, appeared to be a throwback to the Confederacy. In part of the Deep South, I only voted to remove the Confederate flag, uh, battle flag symbol from its own state flag earlier this year. Uh, In the state, in a statement to the Post, Washington Post, Wallace apologized for the comment, calling it "quote inappropriate" and saying. Quote, it in no way represents my, the desire of my constituents and myself. First of all, I truly love the USA and the state of Mississippi and would never support any idea from, of seceding from the Union. I humbly ask for forgiveness for my poor lack of judgment and spelling. No, oh, but uh, he said seceding this time. He just he wants did. it to succeed. Oh, <laughs> He actually misspelled that. He actually wants it to be successful this time. So uh. he's all over the place. <laughs> uh, it started with a Twitter thread from Robert F- uh, Foster, a former Mississippi state rep and 2019 gubernat- gubernatorial, got it right that time, candidate, who in response to Biden's victory said that more votes needed to be counted before settling the race. The majority does not rule. The law derived from a constitution has a final say, Foster wrote claiming the U.S. is a constitutional republic and not a democracy. Well, he's right. Democrats and their fake news cheerleaders are about to get a hard lesson in civics. Um, are they from Louisiana now? He, he's Maybe. not got a southern accent at all, but he's correct. We have to wait until the, the actual yeah. election. Uh, yeah. Can, can, I, the... can I step in here for this entire story and just say down the hall? Nope. <laughs> sure. Nope. We're down going the hall. to... We're going to okay. successfully transition to the next thing. Okay, we got quickies. The weekend will be on the halftime show for the Super Bowl. <laughs> and I'm sorry uh, somebody screwed up because they misspelled the weekend on this. Who is yeah. the weekend? Who is the weekend? Some singer. What's he saying? I have no clue. But he only has two E's in his name. That doesn't happen until February. Why are they announcing this now? Oh, this is We're, about when they announce it. There's not going to be no Super Bowl. Oh, there'll be uh, a Super Bowl. There'll be no fans, but there'll be a yeah. Super Bowl. They said there'll 25% be, capacity. 25% capacity. Where's it scheduled this year? Tampa. Uh, oh, Florida. It'll be full. <laughs> It's allowed to be full because the governor said so in Florida. Mm -hmm. Uh, WrestleMania is uh, trying to get a 25% capacity to 50% capacity. So much so they may even move it back three whole weeks to fix the nation. 
Oh, well, but here. some WrestleMania happens, we'll all be vaccinated. That's true. In April? I don't think talking so. About it's mm-hmm. talking about April, May is for the mm-hmm. vaccine. For I'm supposed to. Common folk. Yeah. Shiprock got pushed back to May, so we'll see if we go. Okay. The, uh, the little uh, concert that we were going to go to in May it was in the uh, Dominican Republic got canceled. So oh, wow. It's supposed to be in the middle of May. Uh, they It was actually originally scheduled for November of this year, but they pushed it back to May of next year, and then they canceled it, like, last week. Yeah, they haven't given a lineup yet, and it's never been this late, but I just feel like I've hit a point where... I just want to cancel. Yeah. Well, the weekend like want to be there. Thirty six hundred dollars tied up in this, and I just want it back. Yeah. Yeah, we were we were like contemplating on whether or not to go ahead and book, mm-hmm. and then she's like, "Well, let me just double check and make sure I I can take the, my vacation then, or like mm-hmm. work it out." So she checked at work, and they were like, "Yeah, that's fine." So mm-hmm. we were like, "All right, cool, let's do it." Like, put the deposit down, and then I was like. Let's just hold off another week or two. And then we kind of forgot about it. And then it got canceled. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it was, it was meant to be forgotten about. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Fire Festival's still going on, though, isn't it? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think they found their bologna sandwiches. If, <laughs> if anybody needs water, I got a guy. <laughs> hey, Jim, you know what's still going on, though? The Cincinnati Comic, Comic Expo, Expo, baby. When, when is that happening? Uh, September. Next September, 2021. Uh, we'll get your tickets. I, I've been promised by the federal government that the vaccines will be out by then. Okay, excellent. So at Duke federal Energy Convention Center. Uh, it will be at the Duke Energy Convention Center, uh, a.k.a. Hospital Number 5 of Cincinnati. Uh, but... Uh, you can look look on CincinnatiComicExpo.com. Five hospitals. <laughs> like you have a lot of hospitals in Cincinnati. There are a lot. I mean, there's yeah. five hospitals within a mile of each other in the Clifton area. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to do a promo. Cincinnati Comic Expo next September. <laughs> Get you your in when they go on. Location. I'm try- Jenny, shut I'm up. I'm trying to do a factually incorrect <laughs> promo. <laughs> But always in funny, waka waka. <laughs> waka waka waka. Uh, since I Comic Expo next September, follow since I Comic Expo dot com uh, for all the updates. Uh, they announced their first guest, Hobie. Hobie will be there. We have our tickets. Uh, we have our vendor passes. Uh, I still have my tickets for this year. <laughs> well, <laughs> they do transfer over. They do transfer over. So, uh, Jeff. Let me get you some box office news. Box office news and world reports with Jeff. Thanks. You're I think. <laughs> the um, we've got no news other than the top five uh, oh. domestic uh, uh, grosses here. Mm-hmm. Um, Freaky made another three point seven million. That's one of the highest we've had in a while. I uh, made it first time. Yeah, it's uh, opening weekend. Oh, and it's a uh, God. We talked about it so much last week. I thought it already opened. Mm. Okay, and it's opening weekend. It made three point <laughs> seven million on its five million dollar budget. So it should get its budget back in two weeks. Sure. It just shut down all the movie theaters. Oh, all of them. Mm. Not drive-ins. Yeah, drive-ins are still open. Yeah. Does Hawaii still have theaters open or something? Uh, Hawaii shut down actually before everyone did recently. Oh, okay. I thought maybe since they were an island, they had a better control of this, but apparently not. No. Because no, people here. travel there and spread it really fast. Mm-hmm. People They're like, let's it. go to paradise and cough on people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Harvey Weinstein has COVID. Again? Yay! He already uh, had it once. But- He's he's very ill. Oh no! Maybe he never recovered from it the first time. 
I, or maybe he got it again. As I have a lot of friends who are uh, that work in the psych ward, um, I have several friends who have gotten COVID several times. It, you don't just get it once and then it, you're cured for the rest of the time. You get you get you're you're susceptible to getting it again. Uh, he has a hundred one degree fever. Well, there you go. All right, and number two this week at the box office, which apparently we won't be doing this segment next week, <laughs> is Let Him Go. It made one point eight million, a total of six point nine on a twenty one million dollar budget. I'm looking forward to watching that. Number three, The War with Grandpa, still fighting strong, a hundred, a one point three million, total of fifteen point two, on a twenty four million dollar budget. Robert Downey Jr. just hanging on. Ah, oh, damn you, Robert Downey. <laughs> uh, number four, Come Play, made $1.1 million, a total of seven point three on a $9 million budget. Mm-hmm. So close to making its money back, but apparently they're shutting everything down again. I was like, Come Play sounds like a... Uh... Sounds Horn? like a naughty movie. Yeah. Sounds like a... Oh, I thought it was a horror movie. I don't know. It's a horror movie. It's a horror the horrors movie. Come to town. Uh. <laughs> it's when the horrors come to town. Yes, right. they, they walk around the street. They come play with us, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then kill you. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. It will kill you. And they just <laughs> you cold with their vaginas. What? <laughs> <laughs> Jason's face was worth it. <laughs> anyway, it number, <laughs> number five, uh, Honest Thief made uh, another eight hundred thousand dollars for a total of twelve point three million on its seventeen million dollar budget. Oh, okay. Uh, upcoming somewhere November twentieth, twenty twenty. Those places that did not close down, so probably Florida. I'm like, that's a lot of Texas, jokes, jokes, Florida, so. and probably Mississippi, based on Jason's <laughs> earlier story. The, the, the movie, these movies will succeed in Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got Always and Forever. After a tragedy reunites Nicole with her childhood friends, they each find themselves in danger, targets of a deranged stalker. Nicole knows this can't be a coincidence. The secrets of their past are coming back to haunt them. So I know what you did last summer? <laughs> I still know what you did last summer? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I know gotcha. what you do every summer. <laughs> so, Bitch about the heat? <laughs> since, since, like, for, for, like, Oscar consideration, like, movies have to be released in, like, New York and L.A. and all that stuff, and those are the big movie cities that they ignore the rest of the country and i like think about those under covid do you think they'll like add like something like biloxi to their if it was released <laughs> in biloxi it's eligible uh there was a a fake uh poster going around uh this week that was congrats congratulations to martin lawrence oscar for best actor in a movie 2020 <laughs> the bad boys, bad for, boys life. for life <laughs> and then they had another one that was Best picture of the year, Bad Boys for Life. Congratulations. I was really I was really hoping that COVID nineteen Kevin Nash film was coming out this oh. week. <laughs> that I COVID nineteen film with Kevin Nash looks amazing. I legitimately really was bad. scrolling through Twitter and I saw that poster and it was Kevin Nash that tweeted it and I was like, Oh, this has just gotta be some like Photoshop stuff that he's like messing around with. And then I so I clicked on it and opened it up, and there's a link to IMDb, and I'm like, no, this isn't real. <laughs> it's what a real t- movie. What he's talking about is COVID-19, colon, invasion. Chinese bats invade America. It's up to Navy t- SEAL Team 6 to stop them. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> but there they, are they movies. The movie. There is another COVID-19 movie that stars Liam Owens and Eloise Frazier. There's COVID-21 starring Robert Carradine and Felissa Rose. COVID-2020. Uh, yeah. Uh, then there's COVID-21 lethal virus. 
Is there a COVID-18 with Kellyanne Conway? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I missed the first 18 COVID movies. Will I be able to figure out this COVID-19? <laughs> and you guys bitch about how many Fast and Furious movies there are. <laughs> <laughs> I just have only watched the one. Oh. Tokyo Drift? The, no, actually, it was the one with the rock, and that was the not the actual line storyline. Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, thank you. That one. Well, I'll just tell you that each time they release a movie, it gets faster and more furious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what else I, we got, Jeff? Eventually, it will get too fast and too furious. Already happened. I like that. Isn't that the second movie? Yep. Uh, anyway, also coming out this week, Vanguard. Covert security company Vanguard is the last hope of survival for an accountant after he is targeted by the world's deadliest mercenary organization. Go Jackie Chan. Oh, Jackie Chan movie. Yeah. Have you guys watched The Vow on HBO? I have not. It's about the sex cult. That they did, like they go through the the whole thing, yeah. and yeah, well, the the guy, like, code name is Vanguard. <laughs> like they call him the Vanguard. That is that the documentary based on the uh, lady from Smallville that we talked yeah. about? NX mm-hmm. yes. SVM. Yeah. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're all fucked up. Jesus. It's a great well, documentary. You should watch it. It does make like hate people though. It's a, like Jason, of course they're fucked up. They're in a cult. True. Um, I can actually watch it because I'm getting HBO Max this week because it's finally on Amazon Fire. Yes, I saw that it was coming. I just stream it through Amazon my phone, or I've devices. streamed it through my TV the entire time. I never had an issue. I was going. Were you going through an Amazon uh, device? My TV. I- is it an Amazon device? It's not. A, it's not. Does Amazon sell TVs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, what I have. This in is my an house. Amazon TV. No. So it's a Roku sh- TV. Yeah, it, it's basically have... a, it's a Toshiba, Samsung, whatever it is, and then it has the Amazon Fire included. Oh, I have a Samsung, and it does not okay. have an Amazon Fire. Okay. okay. I didn't realize they sold TVs. Uh, Samsung actually has a Quibi app on it. Uh, that's what they have on it. <laughs> put a dollar, uh, put a dollar in the jar for charity. Is Quibi still exist? <laughs> Where do I send them my five dollars? Uh, put a dollar in the charity jar. Brian left. Drove, drove Brian away again. <laughs> He's just muted. He's still on my screen. <laughs> Good, Jeff. What else we got? He's cursing up a ton right now. <laughs> saying mean things to Jason. Yeah. I, mean, I always anyway. enjoy his updates on Quibi. Uh, I just, I just not giving him five dollars. I, I pay too much money for HBO. Anyway, we're moving into the last Vermeer. Last Vermeer. If an artist is suspected of selling a valuable painting to the Nazis, but there is more to the story. Than meets the eye. They're transformers. No, it's because it's a veneer. <laughs> <laughs> the Mona Lisa turns into sound wave. I blast them with my smile. <laughs> I love it. Not care bears. <laughs> care bears. This yeah. movie spells stars Guy Pierce. Mm. Oh. What else uh, we got, Jeff? We've got the Forgotten Carols. That's got to be Christmas. The Come Forgotten on. Carols. Uncle John recounts the story of Christ's birth to Connie Lou through story and song. See Connie Lou discover what the world has forgotten about Christmas, ultimately opening her heart to the joy of the special season. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'd rather watch the Christmas shoes, and that fucking movie's awful. <laughs> Christmas. So we're moving on because I forgot about those carols. Yeah. Uh, we've got Ouch. Girl. My girl, you know. 
You know, like the song that Davy Jones sung on uh, the Brady Bunch. I have I have a song "Girl" going in my head, but it's not the same song. It's from Miss Saigon. Girl, I, don't know. I got girls, gorgeous girls, very nice girls. I don't think this is <laughs> around the world. <laughs> That's it about Jim. A young woman returns to her small hometown intent on killing her abusive father only to discover someone murdered him the day before. As the girl searches nice. for answers, she uncovers a family legacy more dangerous than she'd imagined. Girl. Bella Thorne, Mickey Rourke. <laughs> hmm. Is this the reason why Bella Thorne was on OnlyFans? Is this the movie that she was doing research for? Must be. That's asking. Uh, oh, I was about to say, isn't Bella friend. Thorne from like the the vampire movies? Embrace of the Vampire? Uh, no, Twilight. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. What else we got, Jeff? Uh, we've got the Black Book of Father Dennis. 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 A, 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 picturesque, or a, a picturesque chronicle of Laura, a peasant maid, and Sebastian, the young orphan in her charge against the backdrop of overflowing passion and revolutionary intrigue in Europe at the twilight of the 18th century. Oh, that sounds good I think I'll miss that <laughs> one. I'd rather watch Dog of Flanders. Jeez, oh, be. You are Dog of Flanders. I would watch that movie. Dog of Flanders or this? Black Book of this... Father De- Yeah. Would you watch Outlander? Yes. Okay, then Ugh. that tells me all I need to know. Okay. Brian, I apologize for my earlier comment. The movie of all no, time it. is about French Reformation. Oh, anyways. Sorry, I fell asleep <laughs> there. I was just, sorry. Did uh, I put you to sleep, Jason? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, let's see here. Join us next week as Scab Jeff talks about new wave French films. Uh, anyways, uh, top five this week. Top five. Top five. Top five. Top five. Top five replacements for Jeopardy host Alex Trebek. You can't really replace him, but you're going to have to move on and do it. So. As he's dead. Allegedly. Fake news. Um, Alleged. So, I'm just like waiting for him to come back vampire style now. <laughs> uh, that's my number that. one, vampire uh, Alex Trebek. <laughs> 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 number two, Zom- zombie Alex <laughs> Trebek. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jeannie, what's your number five? Um, I really thought this was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> We'll go with a hologram, Alex Trebek. <laughs> That's a popular one. Mm-hmm. That is a popular one. Okay. Uh, Jeff, what's your number five? Uh, my number five, I picked uh, Josh McCuga. Like Melancamp? Uh, no. What? No, Josh McCuga. He he was a personality that was on Collider, and he is on the uh, movie trivia Schmodown. And for the past several years, he has been campaigning that when Alex Trebek uh, leaves and there's a spot opening, that he wanted to do it. So I'm giving him my approval with my number five pick. Yay! Okay. Yes, uh, Brian, number five. Uh, number five, uh, I'm going to go with, uh, astrophysicist Dolph Lundgren. Oh, good choice. And if they get it wrong, he's like, I will crush you. No, that's not the line. (laughs) I will break you. I will break you. No, that's not the line. (laughs) What is it, Brian? What is it? I must break you. I must. Sorry. Sorry. Brian, I, I feel like my Quibi my joke has ruined our friendship this week. I feel really like... hurt, man. Really hurt. It's a very tumultuous friendship any... anyways. It's a week-to-week friendship, and I feel like I, I may have stepped over the line this week. I didn't want to say anything. Mm-hmm. My my Quibi subscription finally ran out. 
I took it as long as I could take it. I didn't get to finish watching all the shows I was watching on it. I didn't want to say anything. Pop up somewhere. Somewhere eventually they'll pop I up. Did. I wasn't going to say anything. Maybe on a flip phone. <laughs> they are making a new flip phone. Samsung has a new one coming out, Jason. Yes, they are. Phone. Yeah, with a screen that folds. I really mm-hmm. try not to make fun of Quibi. I really do. Oh, yeah, and another, do dar- another dollar in the jar. Got it. Another dollar in the uh, in the in the charity jar. I really to try to be a vegetarian, but I just like eating meat too much. <laughs> <sighs> Brian, what's your number five? Uh, my number five was uh, Dolph Lundgren. This Dolph Lundgren. That's right, Jim. Number four or er, five, number five for you. You're my a num- chewy, sir. Jim. You're number two now. <laughs> <laughs> my number five. I'm going to go with Tupac Shakur. Because he's not dead. Ah. <laughs> he's going to make a miraculous comeback okay. and do Jeopardy. Well, for Jeopardy, I could see him finally admitting he's not dead for Jeopardy. I know. I'm not I dead wanted, yet. I wanted to say Elvis, but Elvis died about six years ago in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Okay. Not Marshall? No. They're very close together. Uh, let's see. My number five is um Wayne Brady because I feel like he would be good just making those impressions on every single one, uh, every single question. So let's make. Let's, you don't let's get enough fun. Wayne Brady on. Let's make a deal that you have to they, have it ruin my show. I like Wayne Brady. I like don't Wayne make Brady. Wayne Brady choke a bitch. Exactly. <laughs> through my head. What's that? I said that's what was going through my head. Oh. Uh, the new Let's Make a Deal came back this week with the bubbles. Uh, everybody in their own personal bubbles, basically. I have not so. seen it. It came back two weeks ago. Oh, was it two this weeks ago? Week, okay. Two All weeks right. ago. Fake news. Uh, my number four is Craig Ferguson. Because he's intelligent, but he could also have a little humor to it. So uh, I'm going Craig Ferguson. Do you think his accent might screw up... Uh... That was the only downside because I actually uh, told my wife some of my top fives, and she's like, "I think the accent could could screw it up a little bit." So the accent is fine. I like Craig Ferguson, but mm-hmm. I could see. Uh, Jim, number four. My number four is Jeff. That's my number one. <laughs> yes, put it on the board. Oh, you yeah. ruined my list. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I think he could do a good job, and I am campaigning for him to get it. <laughs> Sweet, I've got someone campaigning for me. Go, Jeff. Uh, Brian, number four. Uh, let's see, number four. I will take Harvard uh, graduate in an economic degree, Ryan Fitzpatrick, from the Miami Dolphins. Ooh, <laughs> it's magic. You know- you know what? I'll be honest. That's not horrible. I like that idea. That's not I like terrible. Patrick. You're right. Yeah. I like that, Brian. Good job. Well done. Thank uh, you, Jeff. Number... Oh, no. <laughs> I'm your uncle. I'm your Should uncle. Should it be Jeannie's number four? Didn't you go, Je- Did you go, Jeff? Oh, wait. That's right. I'm before Jeannie. <laughs> yeah. uh, never mind. Uh, my number four mm-hmm. is David Yost. Best known as Billy the Blue Ranger on the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Jeannie, what's your number four? A uh, whiteboard. Just a whiteboard? <laughs> you just write your questions on the whiteboard. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I, like I would it. not watch that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like Pictionary, but for smart people. I'm going to be honest. I haven't watched... Jeopardy in a very long time because I'm not home in time to watch it. But you know the basic idea, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what my answer is no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, what's no, your I, number three? What's your number three, number, Jeannie? My number three is uh, we'll go with the uh, AI from her. Oh. oh. Does it have to be voiced by Scarlett Johansson? Ah. Or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Colin Jones, her husband, either one. Uh, Jeff, number no. four, number three. It's mine. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, number three, Jeff. Uh, my number three is Aisha Taylor, 
or Tyler. Oh, uh, I love her. I do too. I love and her. She proves that she can host things, but uh, you know, she hosted the soup and and uh, whose line is it anyway? And she's got yep. a fan- mm-hmm. she had a fantastic podcast, and she does have. A- hey, you like bourbon? Have you had her Courage and Stone pre-made drinks? Her old fashioned is pretty tasty. Who oh. likes bourbon? Brian. Brian. Oh, Brian. Well, there you go. Bribe Brian for a floppy with that this year. Just saying. Bingo. Uh, number three, Brian. Uh, my number three is from the graduating class of Brown University in 2001, John Krasinski. Oh. Do you have Halpert? James Halpert. He would just be smoking at the camera the whole time, though. That's the thing. I've got him typecast as, as Jim Halpert. I, I don't know if I could not see Jim Halpert. Uh, watch... watch uh, uh, Jack Ryan, or uh, watch Thirteen Hours. Yeah, Thirteen Hours. He was really good, and that really uh, breaks the uh, the Halpert stereotype. Uh, we're, in a, we're in a couple years. Watch Mister F- uh, Fantastic Four with Miss. Uh, he'll be Mister Fantastic. Him and Emily Blunt are supposed to be the uh, up for it as really? uh, Mister Fantastic and uh, Invisible Girl. Woman. Is that it? Well, it was really? girl to start with, but she became really? a woman at some point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sue Storm. Uh, Jim, what's your number three? My number three, it's not terrible. It's Charles Barkley. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be like having Jason mispronounce everything up there. Oh, hey. Jason, Jason's going to be honorable mention, but oh. will last two weeks because people would complain so much about him mispronouncing every question. <laughs> Fake news. Uh, my number three is uh, my ten-year-old son because he said he knows everything. So I feel like he could probably he could probably do it. Uh, he told you he knows that. everything. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, okay. he's ten, so yes, exactly. He's so. Of, I, normally, he's I didn't think it was until you were like thirteen that you knew everything. Oh yeah. no, so. no, he knows everything. He's advanced. He knew everything at ten. Yeah. But, well, you know, social media and everything. Yeah. He doesn't even have it. No, no, he doesn't. Oh good. Uh, I'm sorry, Jason. I'm going to have to still go with Jeff over Connor. I would too. I would probably. Too. <laughs> uh, How let's quickly see. you just let him there riling on the hook? He's a number three. And the best um, is they, don't, they have to pay Jeff an IOUs. Oh. Oh, yeah. that's how I'd get paid. I'd still do it for IOUs. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is money. Just. Uh, my number two is Mayim Balik. How do you say that name? Maya Bialik. Bialik, yes. Blossom. Yeah, she's intelligent. She's a genius. She has good Amy personality. She knows how to. Yeah, she knows how to do TV. Uh, so she's my number two. My number two. Uh, Jim, number two. My number two. I'll go later on the lines of that, and I'll actually no, not completely. I'm going to go Winnie Cooper. That was an honorable mention for me, Danica. No, 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 no. She has to be in character as Winnie Cooper. <laughs> Winnie Cooper. <laughs> I like Not, it. Uh, be announced as Winnie Cooper, and she comes out wearing the clothes that Winnie Cooper wore in the show. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that, that was really small. <laughs> is that uh, Danica McKellar or whatever Danica it is? McKell- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, not Dana McKell. Winnie Cooper. My bad. My bad. Uh, number two, uh, Brian. Uh, my number two is Kristen Bell. I'd watch. Oh, I didn't even think of Kristen Bell. Okay. Jeff, number two. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's good with that, okay? Uh, my number two is someone who's Proven a good game show host. I'm picking Brooke Burns. It's hosted The Chase and mm-hmm. Masterminds. She's actually really good. Pro- mm-hmm. She's really good. She's proven she can read the questions clearly under pressure. And fast. Yes, with without mispronouncing things. I don't know how that is. So uh, she's my number two. Jeannie, what's your number two? Sherlock Holmes. 
the real Sherlock Holmes? Sure. Or... <laughs> You're like, you pick whatever one you want. It could be a rotating cast of people, but they all have to be acting like Sherlock Holmes. So they just degrade everyone and tell them that they're idiots. <laughs> That's I what my like number it. one is going to be. Uh, That's called the weakest link. <laughs> uh, what's your number one, Jeannie? Doctor Who. Oh, DR period who. Okay. Fuck you. What's he a doctor of? He's the he's the doctor. Of uh, what? Of being a doctor. Podiatry. Doctor who. Proctology. Proctology. It, it's his name. Dermatologist. Actually, Doctor Who is not his name. It's just. Well, we can't know his name. It's it's his handle. There you go. I think it's Rufus Who. I think it's Rufus Who is his first Rufus name. Yeah. Rufus. Rufus. Yeah. 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 yeah, you, you'll yeah. never know his name because you aren't his wife. No, nor have I ever seen the show. Was well, that uh, one of the Amy's or something uh, was his wife? Didn't he marry someone in the show? Her song? River. Okay, yeah, okay. That's who it was. Yeah, Rufus and River. It was a great wedding. Uh, number one for you, Jeff. Well, number one was me. Okay. Yeah. Was, I wasn't that. lying when yeah. I said okay, that. Put it on the board. Put it on the board. Uh, Brian, number one. Uh, my number one, uh, graduating class of the University of Miami, 1995, Dwayne the, the Rock, Rock Johnson. <laughs> Dwayne the Rock. Oh, I thought you meant the real Miami. Mm. Oh, Miami. No, he said the University of Miami, not Miami University. He didn't say mm-hmm. university at all. He just said graduate of Miami. Oh. I said the University of Miami. I'm going to go back and listen. Point? Yeah. He said Miami. <laughs> I just want him to yell at me about pancakes. Although the rock would be a great uh yeah. host. And he Pres- could give the people's eyebrow. Yeah. You mean, you mean President Johnson 2028? Well, yeah, but before he's president, he, he pres- can host a little Jeopardy. Uh Jim, number one. My number one will be a second person who I actually know. I'm going to go with Greg Hamilton, the <laughs> WWE ring announcer. There you go. There you go. You better tag him in this po- in this uh, episode. Uh, <laughs> He's never going like to wade, wade through all the garbage. From this point on, this will be a good show. <laughs> <laughs> from from no. the end of Jim's list to the <laughs> end of the show. That's going to be good. I'll fuck it up. Oh, wait, Jason's <laughs> going to ruin that. I'll fuck uh, it up. I love the, uh, the commitment and passion. Uh, my number one, uh, he's smug. He's intelligent, but he's smug, and he can, you know, mock somebody with just a look. Bob Costas. Oh, and Bob Costas. There you go. No. From this <laughs> point on. <laughs> uh, honorable mention. <laughs> uh, Honorable mention, Frank Caliendo, but he's doing different voices every show. That's what I was trying to do with Wayne Brady. That was my thought. Yeah. You were oh, telling geez. me he was going to be only... singing and dancing. I want Ooh, Turd I'll Ferguson. I'll go for a beer with him. Turd Ferguson. <laughs> Turd Ferguson. <laughs> Turd Ferguson. Uh, Jeff, you got any honorable mentions? Nope. I only had five. Brian? Uh, I had Sylvester Stallone. Yep. Um, Kevin James? Adam Sandler, not Kevin James. Oh, okay. Kevin James and Adam Sandler tag team. They're Siamese twins. They've been sewn together. That That was Chuck and Larry. (laughs) Yeah, that wasn't Uh, Siamese twins. That was married, Jason. Marriage. Marriage is what brings us to Gava today. Uh, Number one, Brian? Wallace Shawn would be good. Oh, sorry. Any other honorable mentions, Brian? Uh, Nope, that's all I had. I had ben uh, Stein, maybe. Who? Ben Stein. Eh, I think the game's passed him by. Okay, well, uh, one that I was gonna write down, but I didn't. Uh, Mindy Kaling. Ah, I could see that. I could see it. He loves the, he loves the Office. I don't know I enough do Mindy Kaling outside the Office, and so I'm just con- picturing Kelly Kapoor doing it, and that would be a disaster. <laughs> She was great in the Mindy Project. See, I didn't the see Mindy that. Project. So, uh, I have Sir Patrick Stewart, uh, but the problem is he's going to be dead soon too. So then you're going yeah, to have to recast. Very that guy. old. Yeah. 
don't put that out there. We don't need to lose more good people. Oh, sorry. That's why uh, I put Tim Curry on my list. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but only Dr. Frankenfurter would really win. Like, he has to be as Dr. Frankenfurter. Uh, he uh, could be Mr. Body or the butler. I mean, the butler. Wadsworth. No. Wadsworth, yeah. The, the butler was pretty... Like, come on. Mr. Belvedere? Dr. Frankenfurter. <sighs> Mr. Belvedere. A hundred percent, yes. <laughs> I, I think we the correct answer is Mr. Belvedere should replace. Yes. Uh, I had Gal Gadot because I feel like she would be pretty awesome in that role. Gadot. Whatever. And uh, the re- from the wrestling perspective, the genius Lanny Poffo. I mean, how else? He's the genius. He knows oh, everything. The genius Lanny Poffo. No. Uh, what was the guy that was on... Uh, ESPN, they had the show, uh, trivia show. Oh, where he knew everything? The Swamp? The Swamp. Yeah, that guy. What's that guy up to? Uh, death. He had a heart attack. Oh, um, really? Jason, Jason, wow. nice. The wrestling no, don't standpoint, think he did. Damien Sandow. Oh, Damien Sandow is a good one. I like that one. I do like that one. He was a genius too. Did he go genius or what was trying? Uh, well, now he's just, now. Well, he was in NWA and he was the thespian. Uh, yeah, he was talking about that. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, we had some honorable, ma- or I'm sorry, some listener feedback. Brian Ow had uh, Ken Jennings, uh, Donald J. Trump. Uh, oh. He knows everything. Mike Meyer. Fire every contestant. (laughs) (laughs) You're wrong. You're fired. Even when Uh, they got the right answer. No, uh, no, you're out of here. Who won the 2020 election? (laughs) Biden. (laughs) Wrong. Wrong. (laughs) Uh, The Rock and Neil Patrick Harris. No one ever said Neil Patrick Harris. That could work. Uh, I I, I, went with too busy doing magic. My entire list was people that haven't been thrown out there already on social media. My entire oh, list was made up in the moment because I thought this was a joke. <laughs> the I, did, did zero, I did zero work for this, so I just made mine up, too. <laughs> I made my list up 20 minutes ago. So obviously. We Brian wins. Brian wins. <laughs> well, the Schwab is still alive. Oh. Yes. But I don't know what he's doing because... Yeah, I know he's so been out away from ESPN he's, for a while. He's bringing Stump the Schwab back to Facebook Live. Oh, uh, well, but he did. Uh, he did write for the Sports Jeopardy, Sports Jeopardy. episodes. Yeah. He wrote most of those. That's the last thing I have uh, on his fa- uh, it, his uh, uh, Wikipedia page. How he is Schwab. Sports Jeopardy? It's coming to Facebook think- Live. I think the beast is smarter than the Schwab. Sure. How much well, would Chuck Chuck and Chuck be. Yeah. But I don't think the beast can answer the sports questions that the Schwab can. Kelsey Grant. I don't think the Schwab can answer every other question that the beast can. <laughs> uh, let's see. We also had Big Dev. <sighs> he had Will Ferrell. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. LeVar Burton. Hologram Alex. So there you go. And Ken Jennings. Uh, Kevin since the Explorer had uh, LeVar Burton. Ken Jung. Oh, God. No, Ken Jung would be terrible. No, stop it. I like him, but not for that. On a serious show. Ryan Reynolds. Uh, Ken Jennings. And Will Ferrell. So there you go. Oh, Will Ferrell's. Stop it. I'm just, if I've seen your penis, I, you can't be the head of Jeopardy. <laughs> you seen Will Ferrell's penis? <laughs> I was, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, and that was it. Uh, titles for the show. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll do uh, Bad Idea first. Bad Idea of the Week, number 1522, replacing Alex Trebek. Replacing Alex Trebek. So. Uh, it's got to be see. done, though, is it? Well, I know. It's just a bad idea. Uh, Jeopardy is done now. Just done. <laughs> You're fired. Uh, Jeannie, thank you for yes, coming sir. on the show, as always. Jeannie of Hobie. Thank you. Yes. 
Yes. I always enjoy hanging out with you guys. We enjoy it, too. Uh, let's see here. We had titles for the show. I had uh, The Queen of Hobie. Uh, it's, only, it's, it's only Tuesday. Uh, I like this one. Train of Sadness. Uh, Must Love Ballroom. From this point on. Uh, better than Shoe Leather. Must uh, Love Ballroom. Uh, Bubblegum Joe. I forgot all about that. (laughs) Uh, Brian, what do you got? Uh, From this point on, um, apparently I missed something very depressing. (laughs) Uh, If you bend it enough, it'll snap. Um, Jason's an asshole for making fun of Quibi. <laughs> um, and Josh Gad has no butthole. Josh Gad has no butthole still. <laughs> and uh, no, that was it. Okay. Uh, Jeff, I have Neil before Genie, Queen of oh. Hobie. <laughs> nope. <laughs> It's not my fault. Train of sadness. <laughs> From this point on, two a.m. McDoubles. <laughs> Do you want to be kicked in the balls? <laughs> the gift that always gives. Pulling a Sinbad. Bubblegum Joe. I'm becoming Jason. Factually incorrect promo. <laughs> I blast them with my smile. That's not the line. <laughs> and Rufus and River. Oh my gosh. Jim, you got anything? I, I only had two. I had, I thought we were moving on, Jason. And, vir- <laughs> and virtually dressed. <laughs> Jim, you got anything? I didn't write anything down. I just, I'm loving you guys. <laughs> Jeff, I like the one, uh, not rev- not <laughs> Sinbad, what was it? The factually incorrect promo? Factually incorrect promo. <laughs> I do like that one. I do like I'm that one. I'm becoming Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm becoming Jason. Uh, obviously, from this point on was popular. Yeah. What do you do from this point on? But I do like Train of Sadness. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Train of Sadness is very apt for this week. Yeah, I feel it like really that. is. So, do we? The question is: Is do we want people to listen? <laughs> is, that yeah. the, is that the goal? Yeah, yeah, the goal is to have listen. people listen. We it should leave the train of sadness. Like people. we want. Ultimately, we want it. Yes. To be heard, yeah, so, right? so, which one do you think <laughs> would work? Put a list and let's name it. Jason's not on this episode. Oh. <laughs> I just since the the entire year has has been a never-ending loop of sadness. sadness. Mm-hmm. I don't want to perpetuate that any further. Okay. We don't have to. We could just name this Fuck Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Christmas. How about, how, about, <laughs> how about this gives some hope, Brian. How about from this point on? Mm-hmm. I like it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Intern oh, Hacky no. approves it. Also, uh, I like it. <laughs> Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. That's 